after 9-11, I became a born-again Christian, and I went into the marketplace looking for what music was out there, what movies and what television was out there that was Christian stuff that I could dig. And I saw these guys doing crazy music and hip-hop show and a skateboarding park with skateboarders that were preaching the gospel to the kids. And I said to myself, this is what I've been looking for. And I said, let's get together and make a new skate video that's hardcore and edgy that the kids can relate to. Actor Stephen Baldwin is easily recognized in Hollywood for his movie roles, his quirky smile, and for being one of the famous Baldwin brothers. However, more and more, his name is becoming synonymous with his bold stance on his faith and his passion for reaching out to the youth through his extreme sports program, Living It. The Baldwin family, uh, did you guys start out, um, did you have a family of actors? How did all this start? It's rare that you would see I'll tell you, uh, this kind of, almost the, uh, the Baldwin dynasty in Hollywood. Well, I don't think ever in the history of Hollywood four immediate siblings have made as many pictures as we yeah. have. Uh, but, you know, it's funny we're, we're talking about this because an old buddy of mine, Jason Patrick, is an actor mm -hmm. who, who said to me, your mom and dad were not in the business at all. You you guys just kind of and they weren't stepped in it. No, not at all. And uh, mom and dad were dad was a school teacher and mom was a homemaker. And uh, my big brother Alec basically uh, got into the acting profession and was making more money in a month than my dad was as a, as a school teacher <laughs> all year. And uh, Daniel and William and myself said, well, if that turkey can do it, we might as well give it a whirl. Uh, that's how it started. You've done a lot of movies. Uh, what would what would you say when you think about all the movies you've done, with exception of Living, and we're going to talk about in a bit, uh, but as an actor, what is the most outstanding part you played in the movie you were in? Um, I'll, 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 I'll give you the, the normal answer, and then I'll tell you which one's my favorite. Okay. Uh, I've been blessed because of every one of the movies I ever made, I never took a part for any other reason than am I going to have fun and is it going to challenge me artistically? So for, in that respect, I love them all. Um, there have been some that have stood out more than others in the experience. And you've played some pretty pretty good characters in terms of, of the good guys, but you've played some, some pretty bad roles well, in terms of the bad guy. Uh, I'm talented. <laughs> Not that, not that there's any typecasting involved at yeah. all, but, uh, but my favorite was the Flintstones. Was it really? I, I, <laughs> I'm kind of giving away my, my uh, sensibility here and my personality, but um, I, whenever I read something, you know, it goes through your head, you know, like the character and yeah. the choices you would make and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I read that script and I said, it's Barney Rubble, it's been done. People have a perception of, of, what, of who that guy is as a character. And can I, can I lend Stephen Baldwin to that and have it be effective? And kids come up to me almost every day. They get a big kick out of it. They, they think it's a lot of fun. And they ask me every day, will you do the laugh? Do the laugh, do that laugh. Really, do the laugh. And I never do that for anyone, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Growing up in that household, uh, was there a spiritual life? Was there was there Christian or biblical roots or religious roots there that that you were able to hang on to? On a scale of one to ten, it was about a one. Really? Yeah. So, did you know Catholic Church growing up? And yeah. then literally from probably around age 11, uh, had no more uh, religious experience at all. All through this, uh, all through the rise to celebrityhood and all, was there a feeling? Was there something down deep that was telling you that there's a God, that there's something else going on in all, all this? Because you made a pretty radical shift. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I like to tell people now that in retrospect, I realized that everything that's ever happened to me in my life, I now can understand was God's hand on my life, you know, kind of watching, controlling, waiting for the right opportunity for me to come to Christ. Um, but, but more than that, 
you know, God led me down certain paths of understanding. For instance, at 23 years old, I got sober off of drugs and alcohol, hmm. very young in my career, um, through a 12-step program, which in those programs, there is a God kind yeah. of higher power that they call God. And, you know, it wasn't a Jesus Christ thing, but it was a spiritual search to God and for God, et cetera, et cetera, that got me clean and sober. I mean, I'm 39 years old today sitting here in this chair and I'm 16 years off of drugs and alcohol. Hmm. And uh, that's a miracle. Uh, and so for me, that was, in retrospect, all of that experience in my belief now was just really a preparation for the understanding that I have now. This gal used to explain that before she accepted the job, she went to her church in Brazil, talked to her pastor, prayed with the congregation. And uh, on that day in that church, somebody received a prophecy that if she had accepted the job uh, and went to work for myself and my wife, that we would come to faith at some point after that and at some time after that would go on and have our own ministry. <laughs>